Hi everyone, my name is Jeremiah Ramos. In this section, we'll discuss about the major types of quantitative research. So there are three major types of quantitative research, namely the experimental design, quasi-experimental design, and the curve design. So experimental designs are used for hypotheses that claims causal relationship. However, these are prone to threats of internal validity. Validity. Um, a study is valid if the conclusion based on the results of the research is true. It also represents how well a variable measures what it's supposed to measure. Internal validity. We can say that a study is internally valid if observed effect is actually due to the hypothesized cause. A study, on the other hand, may not be internally valid if there are plausible alternative explanation to the hypothesized cause. So to give an example, this, this is a dumb example. So I hypothesized that bad internet connection at home causes a decrease in participation in the discussion forums. So I deduce that if the internet student were given good internet connection, the participation will also increase. So I tested this hypothesis by providing a group of students with good internet connection and observed if participation will increase. So after testing, it showed in the results that the student participation actually increased. So with these results, can we conclude that the improvement of internet connection increased the student participation? Well. Maybe we can say that the topics happen to be interesting to the students, which is why they participated. We may also say that their family could have helped them understand the lecture, which helped them participate more. And there are also other possible causes. So these plausible alternative explanations can affect the internal validity of a study. Internal validity, um, the extent to which the findings can be generalized beyond the sample views in the study. So going back to the previous example, suppose we only tested young male students. Um, so can we conclude that female students will also have an increase in participation if the internet connection in their homes were improved? Can we also conclude the same for older students or working students? So this this is difficult to answer since we only tested young male students. So in this case, the external validity is low. So external validity is helping. Uh, I mean, it's helpful if uh, when you're trying to define the limits of your study. So for example, in this example, <laughs> why is there this example? Um, I can say that um, limit of my study is only with young male students and may or may not be applicable to female students or older students. So uh, going back to the definition of experimental design, so experimental designs are used for hypotheses that claims causal relationship, however these are prone to threats of internal validity, or in other words, exper experimental design are threatened by possible alternative explanations. So next up, will study the elements of experimental design. So th there are three types of, uh, there are three elements of e experimental design. Uh, it's manipulation, control, and randomization. So let's begin with uh, manipulation. So it refers to the conscious control of the independent variable by the researcher through treatment or intervention to observe its effects on the dependent variable. So we can say that it independent variable is the cause and dependent variable is the effect. So in this example, uh, this light bulb, this is a light bulb on the right side and it is off. And it is off because I flipped the switch. So in this example, I have conscious control of the cause, which is flipping the switch which turned the light off. <coughs> um, control. The subject in the control and experimental group are similar in number and characteristics, but the subject in the control group received no experimental treatment or any intervention at all. 
So in the simple structure of an experimental design, there are two groups, which is the control group and the experimental group. In this example, the hypothesis is that if you flip the switch, it will turn the light off. In the experimental group, you will test your hypothesis by flipping the switch. In the control group, there will be no intervention, so you will not flip the switch. So in the end, you can make your comparison of the effects of flipping or not flipping the switch. You'll get the picture later. The randomization, this ensures that there is no systematic difference between the groups other than the difference in the independent variable. So when performing an experiment, you randomly select participants, but it should be random and systematic. So this means that if we're going to have two groups, um, they are selected at random, but we may prefer to have equal number of male and female, or equal number of participants, or equal number of participants that belongs in the same age group. So this is to avoid any systematic difference, you know, anything that may actually change the result because of their age or their preference or their gender. So next up will be the examples of uh, experimental design. So there are three types of, yeah, there are three, oh no, four. So let's begin with the pretest, post-test design. The pretest helps evaluate the effectiveness of randomization in providing equivalent groups. So dependent variable is measured twice during the study before the manipulation of the independent variable and after the manipulation of the independent variable. So to show an example and another dumb one, I hypothesize that playing computer games negatively affects students' proficiency in school. In the pretest, post-test design, I divide the participants into two groups. Uh, both will take a pretest, and so that we can, you know, get an idea of their proficiency. And after that, the participants in the experimental group will be exposed to computer games, and the participants in the control group will not. So after the exposure, both groups will be given a post-test and then we'll assess the difference in the two conditions. So the weakness of this design is the possibility of sensitization wherein the participants answering the same questionnaire twice may provide a better answer on the second test or may know the objective of the experiment which can affect the outcome of the study. So, um, a method to resolve this issue with sensitization is the post-test design, I mean post-test only design. With this design, only one test is given only after the independent variable has been manipulated. So this design is also applicable in cases where the dependent variable cannot be measured in the beginning. So this is how it looks like. The weakness of the post-test design is that it cannot measure the effectiveness of randomization. So if you try to replicate the experiment, the result may differ from, from the um, initial experiment. So going back to this example, so since there's no pretest, we have no idea of the proficiency of the students. So there is the chance that the participants in the experimental group are highly proficient to begin with. And even if there is a decline with their proficiency, they may still get a high score in the end. And then on the other hand, um, we may there's probably also a chance that in a control group, we will have um, participants that are not highly proficient. So even without the exposure to games, they may still get a really low score on the post-test. So um, the solution to resolve both the conflict of sensitization and randomization uh, efficiency is a combination of both pre-test, post-test, and post-test only. So this design is called the Solomon 4 group. So in this design, um, the participants will be divided into four groups. So two groups will have a pretest, and then the other two groups will, will not. And then we'll also have um, two experimental groups, and then we'll also have two control groups. And then in the end, we'll, we'll assess the condition of the post-test. 
in the condition. What's next is factorial design. Um, factorial design is an experimental technique which allows two or more different characteristics, treatments, or events to be independently varied in a single study. This is a logical approach to examining multiple causality. So, um, in the previous example, we would like to measure the decline in students' proficiency when they play computer games. So, a factorial design may also, you know, assess how much it would affect the proficiency of participants if, if they were exposed in different duration. For example, four hours playing, or six hours, or eight hours. We can also include include uh, gender, for example, and how it would affect them. So, with this factorial design, we now have uh, six experimental conditions. So, two conditions for four hours, two for six hours, and two for eight hours for both male and female. So, that's all of the examples of the uh, experimental design. So, up next is the quasi-experimental design. Um, Quasi-experimental designs are developed to provide al alternate means for examining causality in situation, situations which were not conducive to experimental control. The designs have been developed to control as many threats to validity as, pa as possible in situations where at least one of the three elements of true experimental research are lacking. So it may be manipulation or randomization or uh, control group. So it is difficult to provide an example of a quasi-experimental design since it varies depending on the study. So, uh, let's see. So in the video example earlier, so an example would be, what if the parents of the highly provisioned students did not permit their children to be a part of the experimental group? So they don't want their kids to play computer games. So, you know, what will happen is that they will be part of the control group. And then what will happen is that we, there's a chance that we'll have you know, not so highly proficient students to begin with, which is going to be a part of the experimental group, which are the ones who's going to play games. So, so in that example, you were not able to, you know, efficiently randomize. So with a quasi-experimental design, you can resolve this issue by devising a method in which um, inefficient randomization will not affect the result. Uh, an example solution is providing multiple pretests to provide a benchmark of the proficiency, proficiency level of each group and comparing the increase and decline in, in the post-test. So you can probably have a pretest for both groups on the first week and then have another on, on the following week to see the trending of their proficiency, you know, like a natural increase or decline. And then right after that, you can start doing the uh, ex experiment. So one will be part of the experimental group, the ones that are going to play games, and the other ones who are not. And at the end, you'll have another uh, test. And then from here, you will, you will analyze the results of this too. So this is just to provide an example. There are different designs of quasi-experimental design. So with the purpose of um, eliminating um, threats of validity. So next up is the descriptive design. So descriptive design, so designed to gain more information about a particular characteristic within a particular field of study. So a descriptive, dis a descriptive study may be used to develop theory, identify problem with the current practice, justify current practice, make judgments or identity, or I mean, or identify what others in similar situations may be doing. So there's no manipulation of variables and there's no attempt to establish causality. So there are three types of uh, descriptive design. Uh, this is observational case study and uh, survey. So observational is studying a subject without intervening. An example would be 
you know, observing your crush on Facebook and see how often she changes her profile picture. And case study, an in-depth study of a certain event or phenomenon. So an example would be, you know, create a case study as to why your friend hates One Direction so much. And then uh, survey, a brief interview or discussion about a specific topic. So, so an example would be, you know, conducting a survey. It's like, I don't know, uh, conducting a survey as to how likely are you to attend a concert if you're given free tickets. So uh, to summarize, so we, we've discussed about the major types of quantitative research. So there are three, experimental design, quasi-experimental design, and discursive design. So uh, we provided four examples of experimental design, which is the pretest, post-test, post-test only, Solomon four group, and the factorial design. So um, with the quasi-experimental design, it's difficult to provide an example since the uh, design is different depending on uh, the type of study. And on the descriptive desi design, we provided three types, which is the observation, case study, and survey. We also tackled uh, validity, what is the internal and what is external validity. So this is, this is such a loaded topic, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the uh, discussion forums. I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.